the Cooler Master Master Liquid uh, 120 Lite. <clears throat> and so right away, um, the it's a 120 mil rad. You could do it in push-pull. It's got holes on each side for that. <clears throat> it's got a decent pump that doesn't require any SATA or Molex power. I'll turn it down. It's got a nice LED on it. No SATA or Molex power required. Just plugs right into the CPU fan header right there. That's it. Pretty decent. And then um, uh, overall, it's quite good. Um, the tubing is a little cheap, I'll be honest. It, it doesn't kink or anything, but the it's kind of hard to mold how you want it, and it's very, very stiff, to be honest. It looks okay, though. I like the little rugged look on it. Uh, also, the uh, the fan it comes with is absolutely horrible. Like that, that they give you the cheapest fan they possibly could. Cooler Master. Um, I currently have a uh, SP120 on there from Corsair, and it's comparable in specification. It's got similar static pressure and CFM, but it is so much quieter. That fan is abysmal, absolutely horrible. Um, mounting it was pretty straightforward. AM3 Plus, the socket. This is an F overclocked FX8350 4.0. There's a CPU Z over here, 4.6 gigahertz, 1.42 volts. Um, anyway, the mounting method is pretty simple. It gives you a back plate. You put studs in there, and, or you put the uh, threads on there, and you put these studs on top of it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, kind of weird though, because you have to hold the back plate on as you attach this. But I mean, I didn't do that. Um, I just kind of nudged it in there slowly. It, it requires quite a little bit of a work versus like kind of like a Corsair H100i where you just attach it to the top and bottom sort of uh, tabs up there. Um, this replaced a dead H100i and I've used several other Corsair water coolers and it's pretty comparable in terms of performance. Um, for 40 bucks it's pretty good. Um, it has the fan you gotta get rid of. If you, if you care about noise at all you gotta get rid of the fan. It's really really bad. I have the SP120 in push, or pull, I'm sorry, and it does a much, much better job than that other fan, because it does the same job, actually. The fan didn't do a bad job, it was just incredibly loud and annoying. So what I'm going to do here is shut the case and run Furmark to heat up the GPU, which heats up the inside of the case, um, monitor the temperature of, not the GPU, but the CPU with hardware monitor over here. I've got CPU-Z just to show you that this isn't overclocked. FX8250, at, right now it's not at what it, what it should be, but it, it goes down when it doesn't want to be worked um, or not being used. Uh, we're going to stress CPU with Ida64, which is a synthetic load. You'll never see this <coughs> heavy of a load in like a real world application. So it should show us how this Cooler Master will do on even newer products like Ryzen and uh, uh, Intel's new Coffee Lake and KB Lake and stuff like that. Because this is a 125 watt TDP CPU overvolted and overclocked, so it should produce quite a bit of heat. Um, so I think this is going to do pretty well, especially in a closed environment. I've got um, one intake. I sort of shifted the intake fan. This is why this one's not spinning. I've got one intake fan here, and I've got one intake fan up here. So it should be pretty decent. You have to have good airflow in a case when you're running these single radiators, uh, even double radiators. Any radiators you have to have good airflow because the way they work. So we're going to um, shut this case, run these tests for about 10-15 minutes and see how they do.